Aloha Friday. This is Beatrice Cantelmo, your host of Perspectives on Global Justice. Um, <coughs> we had a rough week uh, for civil and human rights uh, in our state and in this country. And today we're going to cover a little bit of that. Um, and in perspective, also thinking of uh, Cinco de Mayo uh, to help us uh, digest some of the news uh, that we had. So uh, I think the biggest uh, concern for most Americans this week at a domestic level was uh, the surprising uh, passing on the housing um, on Affordable, Affordable Act uh, with uh, Trump care, which uh, hopefully will not pass at the Senate. And uh, um, we're going to talk about that a little bit. Uh, today and also um, we're going to talk about the end of our legislative uh, session for the state of Hawaii which just happened and uh, we have a very special guest uh, with us which is Ian Davidson uh, he works here think back with us but he also is the owner of uh, uh, Minerson's production so Ian welcome to our show thank you thank you I'm yes. excited to be on this side of the uh, table yeah and actually you know what not too long ago the tables were turned. Indeed they were. And yeah. It was a pretty good show. You can find that on YouTube. <laughs> see, what did you talk me uh, to? <laughs> see, you're amazing. You, you come on one show and then boom, you have your yeah. whole sort of thing laid out for you. It's typical. That's one of the cool things about Think Tech is someone can come in here, give their opinion, say stuff, talk about the things that they're into, and find themselves in a, the, in, it, with the ability to get that message out more. It's pretty cool. I agree, and uh, I think that uh, it's really nice to, to be able to be at the other end receiver and uh, to be a little bit more thoughtful about matters that impact all of us uh, and to hear the perspective of so many different individuals uh, too. So on that note, I know you have a lot on your mind and that uh, um, we would like to cover a little bit of... Um, what has happened uh, uh, this week with Affordable Care Act? Uh, so, <laughs> absolutely nothing happened. Uh, this is my. This is. I'm a sort of a political junkie. I, I, I stay in touch with what's going on. I like to see what our government is doing. It's one of my sort of things. And my my at this point in my life, I've figured it out, like how this sort of works. And really, what we watched was a bunch of Republicans voting just to look as if they're doing something for themselves, like for their constituents that voted them in. They're trying to secure their jobs is all it is. You, you clearly can see that when it, when it gets to the Senate, it's going to change. Nobody has the stomach to take away all of that stuff, all of those benefits from people the way that this House or bill has, has moved into mm -hmm. the process. It's, it's amusing to me, actually. So, it's sort of theater. Yeah, cool. what, what were your thoughts? Um, I mean, it was a very f a thin margin. It was like 217 votes uh, in favor of the bill passing to the Senate versus 213. So four votes made a difference. Uh, but in terms of the content of the bill, uh, I think a lot of people, I think the good, the good news of it is that a lot of people are calling their senators and saying, even if you are a Republican supporter, please do not support this bill in the Senate because it will impact me personally with all of the pre-existing conditions that wouldn't you know, cover uh, individuals and also um, just you know, to think about it, by 2025, 25 million people would be uninsured. That it doesn't make much sense. But were there any uh, parts of the bills that you will like shocked to, to hear? Uh, no, it's Republicans. It's the Republican, the they have all the power. That, as far as that number, that's the number that they needed to reach just to give their president, or all of our president, I guess, uh, mm -hmm. a win so they can go out on TV and smile and say, look, we did what we said we would do, which they've all done a million times all while Obama was president. Mm -hmm. They did all this. This is nothing new. We've seen where that went. If it gets to the president's desk for him to sign it, it'll be a completely different thing. My, I suspect that the Senate will do something about it. They'll tiptoe around it and try to avoid making it the mistakes that the House did. 
Mm. Um, as far as stuff in it, I'm, have we been able to see it? I'm under the impression that nobody's read this thing that they rushed it through. My guess is all the th all the things that people have screamed about Obamacare, you know, all the sort of frightening stuff. I'm sure people are saying that kind of thing. But uh, ultimately, it's just sort of part of the process. You kind of have to wait and see. So to wig out about certain things is mm -hmm. premature, I think, at this point. It's, you know, you can call it Trump care, but no law has been changed. Obamacare is still in attack, intact at this point. And I understand why people uh, get all hopped up about it, like they want to scream and shout, because that's how you motivate a politician to do what you want to do want them to do for you. So a lot of this is all theater to me. I'd like it, you know, I, I'd like to think that this is all sort of a a movement towards what ultimately should be everybody who's getting health insurance. And it should so even fossil health insurance. I, I, I feel pretty firm that uh, we're heading in that direction. It's going to take some time. Well, one of the uh, provisions of this new bill that really shocked me, aside from all of the list of the pre-existing conditions from asthma to uh, HIV to any kind of um, brain disorder to angioplasty, was uh, rape being considered a pre-existing condition, which uh, if it would go through, uh, somebody who would be raped would have to choose between seeking medical coverage for that immediate need, because uh, most people have to be screened for STIs, HIV, pregnancy, also the lacerations that occurs during rape is not pretty, not to mention the uh, mental health support that's necessary to recover from such trauma. That would not be really services available to someone who would find themselves in that kind of circumstances because they would f fear are uh, not being covered later on because of that pre-existing condition. So I think that uh, even though we hope, you know, that this does not, you know, go forward, uh, uh, that the pledge that I would have for someone who is a Republican supporter, who may support this bill, uh, is to think about the cost in their own health and the health of their loved ones, because it will impact people negatively. Um, in things that we take for granted, you know, with uh, the current uh, healthcare system. So, so that was the big, uh, th I think, shock out of the week uh, mm -hmm. in that regard. But we had the end of our legislative session for the state of Hawaii, and I know you're dying yeah. to talk to me oh, <laughs> about yeah? Yeah. some some of uh, the, the the bills that were introduced and not even heard, and some of the ones that were heard and killed at the end. Um, so, where would you like to start? Oh, uh, <laughs> which one? You know, really working start? here, I, I have the opportunity to hear a lot of the past few days, I've heard a lot of people talking about it. And, um, the rail, you know, I think that's one that, I think that's more, why did our government not really do anything? Like, why did they not figure some sort of solution, which is sort of their job? The idea that they, they get paid by our, the taxpayer to do something, and they really didn't do nothing. Like, they didn't come to a conclusion on that or figure it out. How they pay for it, all that kind of stuff, it's, it's all kinds of banter about how they do it cool to see them do it. Um, the death with dignity has been a, a, an issue that people have been talking about. Mm -hmm. It's future. I'm hopeful that, uh, that something like that gets passed. I've had sort of experience with people mm -hmm. being ill and going through hospice and the sort of horrible side of dying and why I can, I can understand why someone would want to end their lives uh, on their own terms. Mm -hmm. And they should be. But uh, hopefully that, something like that will change. Yeah, compassionate care, right. you know, at the end of life. Uh, I have someone very close and dear to me right now, my high knife father, who, um, you know, like, he's so miserable. He's 83 years old. Uh, he has vascular dementia. His body is failing him. Um, he, he really has no quality of life whatsoever. Uh, and he's in pain mm -hmm. all the time. Um, it's horrible. And it's just horrible. <laughs> it I don't think that you know, he's trapped in his uh, body and in his mind. Uh, and uh, I don't think that's how he wished to spend uh, the last days of his life on earth. 
and uh, you know, despite all of the efforts you know, that uh, modern medicine and technology has available uh, to mask or soothe some of the symptoms, uh, the matter of the fact is that we're prolonging his suffering and uh, um, it, it's very difficult. Yeah. I've had the experience watching people die and um, I could be easier and more compassionate for sure if they were able to. And I think that, uh, you know, I understand both sides of the sort of mm -hmm. issue. You know, I get it. Like, it's sort of killing yourself. It's, you know, it is. But it, humans, beings, should have the ability to have a quality of life that they like and at so, or are okay with. And at, at some point, that if that quality of life gets to a point where it's terminal mm -hmm. or it's not great, you know, <laughs> They should be able to. And to make that choice. They should be able to be somehow an avenue for people to be able to make that choice, whatever way it is, whichever way they can figure it out. And it would be nice if politicians, you know, opened up to the idea that yeah. people so, well, have the ability to make these decisions wisely. What do you think happened? Why do you think the bill did not go through? Uh, my guess is religion. You know, that's generally the, what keeps people from doing these things and fear that there are politicians that may not be uh, persuaded by their religion or other religious groups that say, you know, that's, you know don't do that. Um, I think that uh, they're just afraid. They're afraid that they're going to step on the wrong toes and that there's mm -hmm. going to be some repercussion. And it's, it's funny because it's Hawaii and we've had people come through here and it's the same people every year. And so it's like, what are they afraid of? You know, mm -hmm. like, it's, oh, they're, they're going to be there next year or the next election. They'll be reelected. Well, you know what actually brought up a really wonderful point, which is um, the calculated risk that a representative or a senator may take when considering a uh, new bill. And that part of having to answer to their constituents, but also the worry about their public image uh, and the ability to have longevity in their role. Uh, and I really have a hard time with that because I, I do think in many ways uh, sometimes there are bills that have enough support, uh, enough testimonies of constituents saying this is important to me, this impacts my life or my district and I, I would like for you as a representative to hear that. Yet, um, many times that does not happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, that's government for you, though. You know, it's, you know, I'd like to think that when you vote for somebody, you're saying to them, you speak for me, whatever you say. Like, I don't think that they should be going about their daily lives or their job mm -hmm. as, a legis as a government person for representing people here in Hawaii or elsewhere in you know, whatever state to be thinking about their job. Mm -hmm. Like, I, you know, I'm under the understanding that people that get into government are doing it for you know the people you know they want make things they want to make things better, but ultimately, they're it's employment and it's it's sad, but all employment is trying to stay employed. You know. Mm -hmm. Well, my my hope still as an optimist, you know, is that a lot of people say you know we don't want to know what goes into political making sausages, you know, what goes in in, in so into it, but. I do hope that there are a high level of transparency and accountability uh, to the constituents and, you know, really becomes the priority, not the job, uh, because these are public service types of, uh, you know, positions, which is quite an honor. And I know that there's a lot of people doing hard work out there, uh, not only in the state of Hawaii, but, you know, across the nation. But I think more than ever there is an important factor which is uh, civic engagement, uh, having uh, constituents really be on, on our you know, representative's case and say, what are you doing with uh, these views or, or with issues that are important to us? Um, and that there's a little bit more of that check and balance so that we don't end up with surprises like that and, and you go you get so disenchanted with the process. There's nothing worse than having to write your testimony, knowing that there are so many people concerned and wishing the same thing, and that feel that you know the people are just not being heard. Yeah, I, I agree. You know, the civic mm -hmm. engagement super big on that. And it's one of the things that's great about think tank is it's sort of what we're promoting. But um, 
just earlier today, Colin Moore from the University of Hawaii was in, and he made a point about how it's not civic civics isn't something that people learn anymore. So the idea of what civic engagement is, and you, know, you just said it to me, I know what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Perhaps somebody watching right now, that just went right over their head. Or mm -hmm. their in, mm -hmm. impression of what that is is something you know, far off here, far, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I really, I, I don't really hold much, you know, hope in the legislative, uh, legislators. I kind of hope that people on a grassroots level will be trying to teach civics to people so that they understand how that sausage making gets made mm -hmm. and what it takes to make that happen. And you know, ultimately, it's the people that supposedly are going to make change or push the change. And if they're not really aware of how it, how it works, then you're, you can't play the game if you don't know the rules. Yeah, that, absolutely. Right? So I'm more hopeful that the public is able to figure out, and the future publics, mm -hmm. um, people, citizens, will learn more about the things that, you know, like some people will watch TV and think that Trump care is something that is actually happening right now. And that none of that has happened. They're just part of the process. Like your travel ban and all these things, they're just on hold, you know, because it's the process and you just have to know that when somebody makes a lot, there's a process. And so we're going to take that little break and uh, we'll be right back and we'll talk a little bit more about this. <laughs> Hi, I'm Carol Cox. I'm the new host of Eyes on Hawaii. Make sure you stay in the know on Hawaii. Join us on Tuesdays at 12 noon. We will see you then. Aloha. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, which streams live on thinktechhawaii.com, uploads to youtube.com, and broadcasts on cable OC16 and Alelo 54. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Aloha. Aloha, my name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I'm the host of Shrink Wrap Hawaii, where I talk to other shrinks. Did you ever want to get your head shrunk? Well, this is the best place to come to pick one. I've been doing this. We must have 60 shows with a whole bunch of shrinks that you can look at. I'm here on Tuesdays at 3 o'clock every other Tuesday. I hope you are too. Aloha. Welcome back to Perspectives on Global Justice. This is Bia, and I'm back with Ian. So uh, in our short break uh, that we took, we were talking about a um, little bit of uh, our hopes um, moving forward of how to engage our community in, in uh, the, the idea of being more civically engaged and uh, the lack of knowledge that many people have and uh, also the missing opportunities uh, by not being uh, engaged. And so, Ian, I know you've been here with Think Tech uh, mm -hmm. for a while, and uh, you've seen so many guests coming and going. Uh, what do you think would be helpful uh, to like an average um, adult that you know was born and raised in Hawaii who? does not really, you know, take the time to understand that the bills that are being uh, introduced or how that will impact them. What would the government or all the organizations could do to help engage that individual? Well, one, I don't know if the government really wants to. <laughs> like, I mean, they'll talk a game, and I think that they're, if they would, if they had their way, they probably wouldn't let people walking into their offices. I would tell people to go to the state capitol and walk into an office. And start to, I didn't know this for the longest time, that this, you could just walk into anybody's office in there and just say, hey, and, and put them on the spot. You know, I like to go in, when, when I have the opportunity to go into these people's office, I love to bring up sea level rise. It's one of my things, because they don't want to touch it. And you can watch their faces just like, ugh, like, because they know that they can't talk about those things. So I would say pe the public should go and get in these people's faces and talk to them and learn from them. And, you know, go to their little, you know, their neighborhood board meetings and all that mm -hmm. kind of good stuff so they can hear what people are talking about and can get a sense of it. And then, you know, make your sort of mind up on it, which... Right. Um, and, you know, like when I started uh, to visit the Capitol Move, and, and it's quite an intimidating process yeah. because, uh, you know, you're going to talk to a, you know, government official. And uh, I used to be so scared that I was going to make a mistake 
you know, and then you just start to shake up, and you know, your hands are really clammy and cold. Uh, but you know, I think as you start uh, reading more and learning more, uh, one of the things that really has helped me over the years uh, have been the ability to connect with uh, your representative at a personal level. Uh, so I think, you know, even uh, saying which district you come from, why a meta is important to you, you don't need to really be an expert on a subject, but, you know, the way that you interpret a certain bill and how do you bring meaning to that into your life uh, makes a big difference. And also another thing that I've noticed is that a lot of people will go through the whole process and they'll maybe connect with uh, their representative once. But every time that a, a bill is heard, uh, it goes to the next level. So they need to go back <laughs> and write a new testimony. I think a lot of people also feel that they have to take time off from work to give live testimony, which is helpful in many ways, but it does not have to be so. You can provide that information in writing ahead of time and it will count um, you know, on record. Uh, the other thing too is that I know most people don't think about doing that on their days off, mm -hmm. but they can actually schedule times to meet with their representatives ahead of time and having a face-to-face -face meeting in their office. And that's what they're there for yeah. also. Um, I really would hope that there would be more efforts to work with youth and children uh, to visit uh, the Senate more, the schools. Uh, the other day, two weeks ago, I actually was at the Senate um, with uh, Blue Planet Foundation. We had about 600 children uh, from school districts in Oahu coming to uh, learn more and to advocate for uh, green energy. Uh, and which unfortunately was a bill that was killed uh, at the very last hour. And uh, what was very fascinating to me was to talk to the children, and they, many of them did never step their foot, you know, into the uh, capital or talked to a representative or a senator, and they loved it, you know. And I, I think that uh, some representatives and some senators really made the effort to uh, bring meaning to their visit in you know, a, a way that would make sense for them. So we had the one representative um, from, uh, uh, that's from Lanai, she, I'm sorry, yeah, uh, Lanikai. And uh, she was mentioning that she was working on budget for the cafeteria at their school, at the elementary level. And I thought it was really sweet because the kids were like, really, you're doing that? You can do that? And they got to talk about budget, and they got to talk about you know how everything works, and you have to start young, but it's never too late to get started because our lives depend on it. You know, that's pretty cool. I mean, I'd like to I, I, I like it when companies or groups do those kinds of things, but I personally would like to see the state doing these things and paying for it to bring them in you know it's, those children are very fortunate that there's this group that has money to, that can afford to bring these kids down there and take the time out to do that but uh, I, I love it there's nothing wrong but I'd like to see that stuff happening on a regular like guess what every year your school goes to to the state capitol mm. and it's all on us the taxpayer we pay money mm. I'd pay more money if I had to, if I knew that it was going to go to something like that. Yeah, I'd gladly pay that. I think that there's a brilliant idea brewing here, which is introducing a bill where budget allocation would be uh, created to support uh, children elementary through high school to really learn about civics by actually visiting and having hands-on experiences throughout the year. Uh, you know, both at council, uh, uh, county, and also state level. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe we'll be hanging out you can call. Wait, can I gotta write it up. Oh man, <laughs> we can find people. Now, see, to that's do where that. I draw the line in actually having to do the work. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. No, that's good stuff. I mean, I'd like to see stuff like that. I'd like to see the taxpayers' money going to fixing the problems mm -hmm. or fixing sort of the direction of how these things get done. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely, no, and uh, like, I think a lot of people feel disenchanted uh, where it's like no matter what I do or where my vote goes that uh, 
it will matter, you know, my voice does not matter, but I think our last election has shown something different. Uh, the, the, the election was not decided necessarily by those who voted. I mean, it was a very small margin if you compare the votes that Hillary received and Trump. Uh, but, you know, more staggering to me was to find out that about 40 percent of people in this nation did not vote at all. And so uh, you drafted that, you know, there's a lot of division and, and fraction, you know, in, in the country, but that there's a lot of invitation to work with people who may feel apathetic or disenchanted with the whole political arena. That it's like, if you think it's bad the way it is right now, wait if, until, you know, we get to wolves, you know, that we can't. We're seeing that, you know, right now. And I don't bring that up, you know, because we have you know, one political party, you know, or know that, because I, I really, like in many ways, I look at, you know, issues from a bipartisan standpoint, but many of the legislations that are being, you know, proposed and approved, the impacts are people from both Republican and, and Democratic uh, parties. And so we need to be able to look beyond party affiliation and, and really start doing our jobs as, you know, educated citizens too and if we know it, we need to find the tools to be able to get there so um, I you know like talking about the legislative session you know I know you have feelings about uh, homelessness issues yeah, sure. and there were many bills that were uh, uh, you know opened and 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 uh, proposed and that were not hard or killed is there anyone in particular that uh, stood out to you uh, no i think they're all that's one of those hot button things it's like well there's a lot i think that goes into why they don't really care about homeless people or why it's always pushed off and economics all these kinds of things where they just kind of don't count to them and they're more than likely are going to be people that don't vote, so they don't really matter to them. But um, I think that uh, homelessness is a big issue and that they should be doing stuff about that. Mm -hmm. I think it's one of the more pressing ones. Affordable housing, homelessness here in Hawaii, which go hand in hand. You mm -hmm. know, if, there's a lot of people that are, don't have homes. They have jobs, they have children, they just don't have a home because they got all those things, but they can't afford to live here in Hawaii. It's so affordable housing, so yeah. that will be the promise for next year's legislative yeah. session that we Fingers bring crossed. new yeah. new bills, you know, for uh, that money to be available so, you know, we can have affordable housing in the state of Hawaii. Uh, well, I can't believe how quickly oh, our fast. show has Ooh. come to an end. Uh, well, at least today we have... Uh, Cinco de Mayo, oh, great. so yeah. we yeah, can yeah, yeah. we can celebrate and commiserate about uh, our, you know our kuleana, the privileges and the responsibilities that we have in our state and in our nation, moving forward. But I love it. Enjoying I love a Cinco little de Mayo. Break. I just want to say really quickly, it's you know, in America we like to jump on people's sort of uh, holiday sort of things and turn them into big drinking things. I find it quite interesting that uh, Americans love Cinco de Mayo and aren't so fond of Mexicans uh, in general, as far as the government and the way they treat them. It's a whole other story. All refugees, in my point of view. Well, on that spirit, <laughs> viva Cinco de Mayo and viva yeah. Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for watching uh, Perspectives on Global Justice. This is your host, Bia Cantelmo. And uh, stay tuned for next week's show. Until then, we hope. <laughs>